of the things that has struck me about the conversation so far is how each of you in your own way has returned to some notion of the distrust that exists between various players in, in this sphere, uh, between community leaders and people who may come in from the outside, law enforcement, public health officials, the military and the public health community. What are some specific strategies you could think of to try to um, turn the distrust into trust? So this is, a, this is an area where um, public health does have maybe something to offer and um, folks within the security arena have already been working on this, right? So um, if you look at some of the activities in terms of uh, community resilience building, um, including things funded by uh, the military and law enforcement, they look just like a community-based participatory research project in public health, right? They're taught, they're sitting down with local community leaders, they are hashing out a, an evaluation plan together, they're looking at the data together and deciding how to interpret the data together, deciding what to do with the data together, how to move the project forward to its next step together in collaboration with you know, a, a group of local community leaders. That sounds just like you know, a gang violence prevention activity. It sounds just like a suicide prevention activity. It sounds just like an anti-bullying activity, right? These sort of restorative justice type approaches where grievances are laid on the table and taken seriously. I think this, incidentally, is one of the challenges of the CVE paradigm, is that some of the, some of the things that drive people to become uh, violent are legitimate grievances. So um, in the counterterrorism arena, the things that people found uh, have found to drive people to uh, commit terrorist acts, so setting aside the sort of public health activities, just uh, it, the things people mention are, you know, Guantanamo and uh, torture and invasions, and right? Those things don't show up by and large in the CVE framework because those are political acts and policy decisions that, are, that comprise legitimate grievances. So somehow we have to have a way for communities and individuals who actually have legitimate grievances to be able to talk about those. By the way, we don't have to think about Islamic at, at, at all. At the community level. Yes, right, and it happens not just with regard to Islamic radicalization, right? This is gang violence. Right. And, uh, and mistrust of the police um, uh, among you know, many communities in the United States. So these are uh, very comparable sorts of activities. They're very challenging. There is no silver bullet. These are not the kind of things where you, know, you have one scientific tool that you come in and use and now you're, now you're done. Um, these, are these are what we call complex adaptive challenges.